the mid-1980s, the Nebraska Soybean Board provided UNL with $15,000 to begin a soybean breeding and genetic studies project. Last year, the Nebraska Soybean Board invested more than $230,000 in research for the project, which will soon mark its 31st year. Last year also saw the commercialization of three additional soybean lines from the breeding program and the completion of a major license agreement with Bayer Crop Science. That partnership will allow access to soybean breeding lines and populations from the program. George Graff, a UNL professor of agronomy and horticulture, has worked with the program for many years and recently showed a group of Nebraska growers and researchers around his soybean plots in the South American country of Chile. We recently talked with George about that trip and about his history of work between UNL and the Nebraska Soybean Board. All of our work is related to soybean breeding and cultivar development. So our main objective is to develop you know, new soybean varieties that are going to enhance the production and profitability for soybean farmers in Nebraska. How long have you been working with the board? Uh, 25 years. So they've been really good. I started here in 1988 and they it gave us continuous support for the last 25 years to develop this soybean breeding and genetics program. So uh, we've come a long way and uh, it's turned into a really nice program, I think. Describe some of the work you're doing in Chile. You have research work going on down there. Uh, yeah, we have two nurseries we use in Chile. And so the advantage there is that we can use the South America nursery uh, as an off-season nursery during our winter and we get normal growth in the field and uh, as it, you know, compared to Nebraska in the summer. So we can actually evaluate traits like yield and other things that we would be able to do in Nebraska as well. And the yield data we get correlates well with what we find in Nebraska. So we do um, things in our chili nurseries like progeny row selections. Progeny rows would be the first time we get to look at a new soybean variety. Uh, you know, we have tens of, we have about 10 or 12,000 progeny rows in Chile. Um, and so we grow those and make selections out of those that can then come back and go into yield testing at multiple locations in Nebraska. Uh, we also can do some pretty specific yield test experiments with drip irrigation because in the region we use in Chile, they get no rain during the, their summer, mm -hmm. during November to, to April. So we can provide really specific water treatments. Um, we can provide full irrigation and, and get that yield comparison. And then we can provide like a managed stress uh, and, and induce stress at certain developmental stages like uh, full you know, beginning pod or later in seed fill. And so then we can get really good information on how the range of new varieties we're developing uh, behaves to water stress, you know, drought stress at different developmental stages. So we, um, the nursery is really useful for a lot of different things including uh, generation advance, um, really good yield data, and then those managed stress environments. You recently uh, sort of toured around a group of Nebraska producers and uh, pr uh, producers from the Nebraska Soybean Board as well. What did they, uh, what did they find interesting or what did they think uh, maybe they saw that could be used in Nebraska or could help out at least in production overall? Um, well, they saw our plots, the drip study plots. They saw some of the new, uh, the populations that we have there from some new crosses so they could see kind of the traits that are in there. There's a, um, they could see the plant growth. I think this, the plants were right about uh, R4. Um, so they were beginning to set some pods and they could see the differences in our irrigation treatments um, you know, in those plots between the fully irrigated and the, the uh, limited irrigation treatments uh, in terms of plant height and sure. some, some uh, beginning pod set. So uh, that part was interesting. They also learned about, you know, the, the agricultural system in Chile. In that region, all of the irrigation is dependent on snow melt from the mountains and there really is no rain during the season. So all the agriculture, uh, the fruits and, and grapes and vegetables and all the research, the agricultural research that goes on there is all dependent on 100% on snow melt from the mountains. So that was a, another interesting component of that. What's next for you? When do you go back uh, and what does the harvest look like down there? Uh, well, in Chile, you know, they, they don't really grow uh, soybeans commercially. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of companies there doing uh, research, using it for things like what we use it for. Um, harvest will start the end of this month. So I go again the 25th of March 
to collect data, make selections, and start harvest uh, in the beginning of April. So um, the plants look really good. We're getting good response from the treatments. The populations look good, and, and the, the, the progeny real fields all look good. So there's been really good growth, um, and we're looking forward to looking at the data.